but you know what I wanted to ask you? Um, uh -huh. Okay, you're playing a million a million instruments and stuff like that, right? Hold on, it's like something in my lip. You're playing a million instruments. You're on tour. I can't even imagine how you're transporting all these instruments. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like bad enough when you have to bring one saxophone. We do have an incredible, incredible crew and team behind us. Um. I am the one that plays the most instruments in that thing. Uh, Hans joking says, Pedro, man, the only thing missing there is for your little fruits and stuff. Like we have in LA, the guys selling the fruits, you know, and the tacos and the thing. It's like you have, <laughs> you have your own thing. It's like, it's so funny. But uh, of course, a lot of that is my own choice because I respond and he allows us the beauty of contributing to his thing. When I hear the things, then I said, okay, again, then I can contribute with this. A again, when I heard the Stampede and, and Lion King, I said, I can put a Kulepuya drum there that will elevate this to another place. And he did. You, you see? So it's wonderful that he allows us to enrich the thing. Obviously, he also asks for many things, which is fantastic. But I have my own tech. I have my own my own uh, helper, who is incredible. And uh, without him, I would have not been able to do what I do. Still... I am the last person to leave the stage every night because even though I have my own tech, again, without whom I would die, <laughs> it takes off from electronics. I have the electronic stuff. Maybe I'll send you a, a little picture later. If you can see the, the, the setup I have uh, with hands. <clears throat> and I have the country bass flute in the back and, and all these things and through the looks and four or five whistles, Irish whistles and all and all those things. And, my 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 bansuris and all those things, and in Azurna from from Spain that I start with show with is I have so many instruments that I have to bring myself in my carry on because many of those things there's a, there's a flute that I did as a consequence of a challenge I received from Hari uh, from the great uh, Ravi Shankar my master Raviji Pandit um, when I did my big flute he blessed me and everything and then I went to to study with him in India. And then he said, Pedro sounds beautiful, but it's low like a cello. I wish I could hear a violin. So, oh, no. So I made a version of that instrument, but smaller with the inner chamber of where I play with my fingers with the size of the chamber of a Western flute, but with the mouthpiece of a bansuri. And I call it Rakiva because it's a Ravi Shankar King Bansuri. It's too long, so Rakiva. And that instrument took me 10 years to make. So I cannot, you know, the Duduk, I, I just oh, wow. finished doing these days. Is There's only one in the world. So these things I need to bring with me in my carry-on. They will not depart my presence. Yeah. So I have to spend a long time setting up at the end. Although my tech does all the other things, there are things I got to do myself. So yeah, we do have technical assistance without which. Don't I say 30 tons of equipment that we carry, something like that. How do you bring that overseas? That's cool. Oh, they, they, they fly them. They fly oh, they, it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They send, they send the stuff. That's the thing. This is a great question again. Like the bass flute, the country bass flute. No, not the country bass. I have two, but the bass flute have three, four bass flutes. So I can send this one because if I have recordings, which happened to me, then I can cover with something else. But the country bass flute, I have to bring that with me on the plane as extra luggage because I might have a recording one day before I, I get in the plane. You see, so many of the instruments and electronics I send ahead of time, at least two weeks, and they return to me two or three weeks after because they go with all the equipment of hands and everything. There's like 23, 25 cases of things that go, you know, the electric cello, the electric violins, all the keyboards, all the computers, everything is is a done is a huge endeavor we literally travel with our own stage with our own lights everything comes down every day and gets set up it's a huge endeavor we have our own orchestra <laughs> the band is 20 people imagine <laughs> Wow. And you know, you know, the funny thing, okay, because you know, because you live, you live here, all the, um, the, uh, the press about Taylor Swift and her, you know, residency here at SoFi, right, right, right. And so, you know, she's uh -huh. bringing, you know, millions into the economy, whatever. But, you know, I think you guys would blow that away in terms of all the stuff that you need. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if we can be compared with Taylor Swift, but I'll tell you this. 
Hans has said something several times, which might sound arrogant, but there's a lot of weight to that. Many times he was in stage, I don't know, but I'm going to say something heavy. I am blessed to have what I consider, I believe, is the best band in the whole world at this moment. And I turn and I look, and considering the level and the variety and the utmost uncanny super level of the people involved and we're like hmm you might be right that might sound arrogant but it's just to tell you how heavy the level is of musicianship of the people are his band you know when you have a bass player who's the bass was not named the best best player in the world in 2019 that another guy that spent two years in africa playing with Burkina Faso, black guys, traditional thing, and spent four years in Turkey, but comes from New York and, and is mentored by Greg Osby and whose project didn't win the Grammy, but Chick Korea called him apologizing because Chick won and he said, you should have won. Mm. And now he's teaching for 16 years at a university uh, in Vienna, Austria, was this super genius guy and it's an engineer and a, a, a arranger and composer when you have people like we have label when you have lisa when you have a genius like loire cutler this singer uh, was from new york this jewish thing it's incredible <clears throat> like a little and that she can do harmonic singing but then he she can do very aggressive rock and roll kind of thing and then she can do the quietest thing and she starts the whole show three and a half minutes walking playing this super over thing. and we're standing behind a full wall of video thing that when the thing explodes they bring this out and the whole band is in the front <laughs> it's like oh. it's an amazing thing and you have people like nick glennie smith who's this incredible composer that's been doing stuff with hans for over 40 years i mean the the level of musicianship is like Rosanda playing, Tina playing the cello. And well, he has a super band. It's a super band. And 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 Godfrey, who's His Majesty, you know, playing the guitar, who who is the embodiment of that never playing the same thing every night. I, oh my so god, you're reading my mind. I was just gonna ask, yeah. Such a high level. Listen, listen, Donna. The way it feels is like he's going to fall on the precipice and never does fall. Mm. Not taking, not taking prisoners. He takes no prisoners. He doesn't play comfortable. He goes all the way. And I say, Guthrie, you're like a cat. You always fall in your four paws and he laughs at that. His level of commitment to the truth of the music doesn't allow him to go into cliches. And that's a beautiful thing. And to see somebody see that every night, you go like, yeah, it is possible. It's not only Wayne Shorter that can do that. <laughs> that's that's so interesting because because when you talk about like cliches and stuff like that, you know, um, and it's really funny because a lot of, I get email newsletters from a whole bunch of people and whatnot. And I had received an email newsletter maybe a few months ago and they featured a jazz teacher and he was talking about, yeah, all you need to do, you know, is learn like, you know, a uh, five to 10, two, five, one patterns, and then you could solo for hours on a gig. And I was like, are you kidding me? Well, you, you know? see, poor, poor thing for me, that might be a practical thing for him. For me, that is polar opposite of what I'm trying to talk about. Yeah. Why, why Donna? Why? Why? Because creativity is an endemic part, is, is a built-in part of us. As a believer, I, I believe the good book when he says that we were created to the, the similarity of the creator. And that, and that involves not only to be able to distinguish good from, from, from not good, uh, good from evil, but, but to be creative like his. He's the creator. We have the same nature from the creator to create. And there's no, nothing more fulfilling, Donna, when I finish making an instrument and I blow a sound or I design something in my electronics and I blow a sound that I know that nobody else in the, when I play a melody that I know that nobody else in the world has ever heard, that's beyond gold. Yeah. And I want to live there. And I have a whole thing 
that I'm working on, starting with literally singing things that I need to go and play exactly the way I sing them because the voice is the closest thing to, to your imagining brain. So we need to be able to pass that to our instruments, to be able to hear and play like this. Uh, again, Wayne is the perfect example for me. And after that, you know, uh, uh, I go through something important. I'm going to say he has structures through the solos he does, but that doesn't say that he plays the same thing even within the structures. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. an amazing thing to be able even to have certain points of reference, musically speaking, which is, can I, can I say something really, really important that I didn't say musical that might bless people dealing with improvisation, please, yeah, please. Yeah. Is playing conceptually. Playing conceptually. What does that mean? What do I mean by that? First, when I transcribe somebody, I want to play verbatim what they did, verbatim, to the atomic level as close as I can. Why? Because they phrase the thing in a way that me natural by myself will never be able to do it. So that makes me stretch. That makes me grow. That makes me grow, number one. Number two is I'm going to analyze, it's called in philosophy, the noetic part. I'm going to intellectually analyze the places things spoke to me. There are certain things that Breaker, Breaker would do that then I analyze and I realize he took them for Coltrane or for Joe Henderson. But they're a Breaker, though. You know, I mean, he made it his own. And when I say, cool, now I know that. But now I don't want to play the cliche and repeat verbatim that. I want to play based on the concept that this thing came from. Then I'm personalizing and I'm applying and I'm making me my I'm making my own based on the elements and the tools that I realized that I learned, which is the musical concept that made these three, four notes come from. Then once I have this, then I don't have to repeat this. And I'll give you an example real quick. When I'm when we were in a five. Two five four. One of the things I learned from this was a Coltrane thing. As thing I heard breaking twenty twenty I said, "Oh, that's so beautiful." And I realized I said, "What is playing?" Oh, on the five, he's playing basically keeping the seventh, of course. Say to make things simple, if we are in G seven, we keep the note the F right, but he's playing on a minor third half step above that G. So the notes are G sharp or A flat to be correct is B, which is a third, but mm -hmm. if it's minor thing, we'll call it, you know, flat, C flat, but sound is B. So the notes will be A flat or G sharp, B, E flat or G sharp. D sharp, I'm sorry. Oh, I you see? So if you play G sharp minor triad, again, G sharp, B, D sharp, or their hand harmonics, A flat, B, or in this case, if you want to make it A flat minor, is C flat and E flat. Anyways, it sounds heady on anything, but just think a minor triad, half step up, and add the seventh. That's it. Then, based on that, I can make all the permutation I want from here to planet Pluto or protoplanet Pluto, the way whatever they want to consider, <laughs> because people argue it's not a planet. Um, and I'm gonna sound hip, but I'm not gonna be repeating buddy, buddy, baby, right. You know what I mean? It's a way, and you know what's interesting too, we talked about tension and release, right? So you found a way that Michael Brecker and through through his studies of Coltrane and Henderson, you know, found tension, right? Correct. But then I can personalize. That yeah. is what I call playing conceptually. It's not that I'm repeating verbatim like a parrot, what somebody else played, but I'm learning from their wisdom and making it my own. Even as simple as changing the order of the notes, that's your expression of that concept without copying somebody. I love that. So I want to further this, Donna, 
in everything I do so I can not only develop more my harmonic ear, but I know I can develop more, I have to, but at the same time, be able to not repeat things I've done before, but I almost have a wonderful, almost guarantee of what's going to sound really good and it's going to be musically correct. Am I making sense? Yeah. And you know what? I, I just, I, I have one more question. So um, some people will be like, you know, gosh, I mean, I, I, I feel like I play the same things all the time and whatever. And you're giving an answer as to how to, you know, get past that. But um, my curious question for you is who right now, like, who do you listen to for inspiration? For it, many, 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 many people. I, I, uh, the list is too long, but Wayne just kills me. I, I'm an, I'm an a Wayne and believe it or not, Zawino plays. I'm listening to Miles again. I'm listening to Greg Osby just came out with this very short thing he did with a, with a trio. At the same time, coming back to something you said, the comment I made is also helped for people to not play the same things is if they get, again, something like Ben on the Box and they learn from the improvised solos that are generated by the solo generator. It's an incredibly liberating, freeing thing. And applying again these three principles, play the thing verbatim, analyze the places where you like what you heard, get the principle behind that, that propelled that, and use that to make your own. Another extremely important thing, real quick, uh, uh, I don't know. I'll end this from my brother Ramon Stagnaro, who died out of COVID, sadly. One of the greatest guitarists in the world. One of the three, four studio guitarists here is my brother. He's in Alex's uh, last uh, album that just came out. He just died of COVID two years ago. Oh. Uh, and we miss him very, very much. He got me into something. No, no, you're going to freak out with this. Get ready. I'm working on this, and I'm far from it. And that's where I can prove that people are not dealing with the changes right. He said, Pedro, I call this play through the changes. He started with two chords. See, E major seventh and whatever following that. And he goes, those two chords go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven da 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 di da di da 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 di da da di da di da da di da 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 di eight going up and they going out and you always gonna go from one to the second note to the third note like that you're always gonna go going up through these two chords. Oh, got it. Okay. Try that and get a volume first because you're gonna get frustrated with yourself because you realize that you will be hard connecting with things. I'm doing that with things like giant steps. Oh my god. Okay. And normal normal things like confirmation and normal things like that. And it's an incredibly humbling thing. And then I invented my own things. Then I go literally through the whole octaves or whatever range of the instrument while the changes are happening and then you come back down while it's all the way from the lowest note to the highest or the lowest to the highest or lowest to the highest you're gonna see where you're where you're and that band in the box is perfect for that because you can put it at whatever speed you want first i would recommend to do it without time just do it because you're gonna yes. get frustrated do it slow manage not with a click then do it and then i invented my own thing which is four notes only humbling from here to the moon but when you start connecting you go like number one donna the sound of that you go like i have a friend who's wonderful his brother's great trumpet player so they come from a system and his brother's tremendous jazz player and played for Dudamel's orchestra many years and my friend is flute player and he's one of the few 
of that generation that could play. His fa their father is bass player, right? And I shared this thing with him. And I wrote the, the, the linear notes for his uh, for his first album because he's amazing. This this kid playing, he's, he's not in Miami. And and uh, um, I shared this with him and his eyes were like, and then when he started practicing that a little bit at home, his dad opened the door and said, what the heck is that? Mm. It makes your brain go like, yeah. If something that happens with me, Donna, I'm sorry. I have too much awareness. I cannot lie. Too many people play lying. I'm sorry. I. The truth is very powerful, you know. I, I want to abide in the truth. Even, of course, everybody makes mistakes. I remember Breaker, I can I can mention that. Breaker and uh and the Breaker Brothers live in Barcelona, this incredible video. You, you can check it. They're doing some skunk uh, funk. And he's, and you know, the, I knew even the beginning of the solo. At one point, even Breaker goes off the changes. And he laughs. <laughs> and he keeps going, hey, we're human. I, I understand. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that are not aware that as artists that we are, we owe it to music. We owe it to the art we have been bestowed upon. The responsibility to try to do the best we can. I'm the first one making mistakes still. There are things of mine recorded that I'm embarrassed, don't I? Really? I go to the to the extent of <laughs> telling one of my employers, you want me to return you some money? Because I, I sucked in that thing. I'm not happy with what I played. Should I give you some money back? Li literally. <laughs> And they laugh and they go, ah, it's great. You, you, your set is too high. No, I mean, this is why I'm here. It's like, it's, that's embarrassing. My name is in there. You know, but again, God made me a musician to keep me humble. But I cannot stay at a place where I know that I can do better and just be conformist. Conformism doesn't go with me. I'm sorry. I might be on the spectrum. No, I might be. I know I'm on the spectrum. Forget it. It's obvious. But I see it as a beautiful thing, you know, it's like my craziness is beautiful, holy craziness. Because it's stuff that is 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 worth it, it's positive. You, you know, I don't I don't have a second of boredom in my life. No, no, I don't know how many people can say that in their lives. That's true. Yeah, no, that's that's totally true. And and you know what? Here's what I want to say too, that exercise you talk about. First of all, the first thing that comes to mind is the Rubank books. Do re mi fa so la si do re do re mi fa so la si re da 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 right. Rubik. But that one, but that one stops in the first. No, I know, I know. That is a little bit less difficult than going da da di da do da di do te da di da do da di de di da do da di do de di da di de do di da do da 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 da. I know, I know. And it changes going. Gary and you Burton start would have with, to do that. Again, you start only with two chords. Then you can do two fives, major, two fives, minor. Then you go to rhythm changes, for example. Oh, but for rhythm changes, the blues, obviously. Then you go to rhythm changes. Then you go to other standards. And then you go to, you know, uh, 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 like I said, giant steps. And then you do giant steps in different keys. Ugh. So your brain. So I owe it to myself. I'm not a jazz player, but as a musician, I have to do that. that. That's my responsibility to deal with this. And I'm doing studio work, and I'm doing modifying dudukes, and I'm doing electronic stuff and designing sounds in something called the Egan Matrix, which is like the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? I'll Google that Egan Matrix, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And it's like, but it's important. These things nurture my reality as the call to respond to the call I've been blessed with. I believe like Bach said, Don, I'm finishing my thing with this. And I, if you have more questions, I'm okay. Bach said that music existed with a double, a, a double uh, 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 motive, purpose. Music existed to glorify God, and to sublimate, to uplift the human soul. Since I am 17 years of age, I said, I want that to be 
the purpose of my life. And God has blessed me with that. And after we went through what we went through that I told you already, this was brought to yet another level. Because listen, this is heavy, I'm going to tell you. Two or three Grammy certificates already. Dune won the last Oscar for best music. The first sound you hear in that thing is my duduk. Uh, <clears throat> three songs with Sir Paul McCartney, his latest CD, his latest CD. I do a, I did a duet with them 15 years ago. Three, four things I've done with John Williams. I had not to work with him two times. He called me because I was touring with hands. Imagine that. I missed two recordings with John Williams. And think I can keep saying big things, huge things like that. But you know what, Donna? None of that stuff is going to return my daughter one day with me, dear. Yeah. So God can keep blessing me with all these things. I keep very humble because anytime anything tries to bring me to a place of me thinking anything of myself, I think about where our beautiful daughter is buried. That puts me very small and that puts me in my place. I'm like a monk. I have the beautiful task of developing this beautiful gift God gave me to bring it to the highest possible expression again as a thankful thing to him and to impact people in times where stupidity is being rewarded yeah and superficiality and 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 absurd temporal things i'm looking for eternal things go that will endure beyond these times and whatnot and i want to bless people donna I want to bless everybody looking at this. I want to bless you, dear, for the opportunity to allow me to, to do this thing. And I want to bless everybody that listens to this, that you guys can achieve the highest possible potential from what you have received from above, that in truth, in realistic truth, you could have the awareness to dedicate yourself to what you have been called, and you can bring positive wonderful consequence to times that desperately needs i bless you as a believer in jesus name respecting other beliefs but i bless you i believe we need good things in this world when there's so much horror done yeah there thank you for the wonderful opportunity uh, uh i'm honored not being only a, a full dedicated saxophonist to be part of this I'm very honored you allow me to be part of this. Thank you.